welcome viewers welcome back to uh, this course on education for sustainable development so in the last class we are discussing about we have just started the discussion about the whole institution approach so today we'll just explore the other aspects and the different dimensions of this whole school approach so the key elements of whole institution approach okay so uh, in the last class we have discuss about the different aspects starting from the administration to the community participation to the curriculum content teacher training to uh, you know to the infrastructure everything so the key elements of whole, uh, whole institution approach is like an institution wide process is organized in a manner that enables us the stakeholders like all the stakeholders like leadership teachers learners administration uh, then um, community participation that public uh, relation officer liaisoning officers so they are supposed to jointly work together supposed to develop the vision develop the plan develop and implement the plan uh, uh, and work together uh, work together on the vision of implementing esd uh, in the whole institution so that is the multi here you can say the multi stakeholder approach in esd implementation and then second thing is the technical and other possible appropriate financial support infrastructure uh, okay in the an institution support for the reorientation of the uh, staff so this also includes the you know very good relevant practices and examples training inviting the uh, inviting the experts to give the training orientation refresher courses and training for the leadership also training for the administrative staff and the development uh, of the guidelines like the action plans action plans maybe yearly action plans annual action plan or half yearly and action plans so all these uh, things should be incorporated and should be also uh associated with the research perspectives because research actually enriches the whole thing and there were not only the teaching not pedagogy but also the every aspects of uh, the institution so research to be accompanied with uh, associated with this all this so infrastructure support system training reorientation even government guidance and counseling sale then uh, sustainability sales are also there then you can say um, refresher uh, refresher uh, courses training courses orientation course continuous learning process sales are also there administrative uh, staff is there logistic is there infrastructure is there library is there and library is there and technology support is there so all these things to be put together in a very comprehensive way in a very <coughs> systematic way to implement the action plans five year action plan or the uh, yearly action plans and that uh, or half yearly action plans uh, so and well associated with the research facilities so research facilities uh, for the um, students for the teachers and for the uh, others uh, senior leaders so then next is uh, existing relevant inter institutional networks so the institution uh, being situated in a particular location in a context and started since a long time or whatever it has already developed a kind of network so how to mobilize that network so inter institutional network what are the other institutions in that area in the cities or in the um, towns etc so you, and what is the liaisoning work what is the network of this uh, particular institution to other institutions and other institutions not only the academic institutions but also health or health institutions health organizations ngos ngos even the uh, in administration also state administration also and other international bodies like the unicef and uh, unesco and who uh, so and uh, all kinds of things so, so what is the inter institutional network that is already existing and how to strengthen this so already uh, existing networks can be mobilized uh, and enhanced to facilitate the mutual support Uh, such as peer to peer learning training whole institution approach maybe some arranging some intervention program maybe arranging some awareness camp maybe engaging the community people neighborhood people for uh, any kind of you know not only health check up vaccination but also you know uh, for kind of you know self help group for you know for initiative some um, community activities nss activities uh, maybe some handicraft uh, handicraft uh, um, handicraft uh, exhibition maybe the you can say um, local uh, local uh, fo local food or local uh, objects local things local uh, products agriculture products or uh, local handicrafts local uh, teaching aids all kinds of things can be uh, organized with the help of this uh, institutional network and also to strengthen further and to strengthen further by expanding the network so this uh, institutional inter institutional network and uh, um, expanded network actually helps in uh, helps in uh, not only enhancing the 
capacity, capability and the activities of the institution, but also the reputation, the reputation and recognition of the institution across the state. Uh, so, that is a, it also enhances the, you know, uh, recognition that is the brand name or you can say uh, the status of the uh, institution uh, in the society, in the community among the stakeholders. So, that is why that is the, so how to develop the inter institutional network and to leverage it, to mobilize the resources to expand the network that is one thing. Then again uh, with the technical support and other appropriate financial support etcetera, how to develop the 5 year plan, yearly plan, half yearly plan, quarterly plan and organize the continuous learning training programs etcetera to follow the guidelines and implement uh, ESD policies. Similarly, the institutions multi stakeholder partnership for ESD implementations. So, the next is that so, the, these are the main three important. So, while elements of the whole institutions are important, so integrative and the critical forms of learning are also the uh, are also the core of the delivering ESD. It is not just enough to implement the ESD syllabus curriculum, etcetera, etcetera, but also to uh, to uh, implement the to uh, adopt uh, to apply the uh, integral um, that means the critical form of uh, learning and pedagogy, reflective thinking, reflective pedagogy contemplative learning, these kind of things would be incorporated with the ESD, ESD principles and ESD content. So, ESD will be there, but along with the pedagogical forms like uh, you know critical form of learning, critical thinking, creative thinking, then uh, contemplative thinking, then experiential learning, contemplative education, transformative learning all and, and uh, even also uh, technology is already there. So, all these things um, uh, blending all these things. So, this blended mode of you know, ESD implementation uh, in the classroom atmosphere in the um, institution will be more beneficial, will be more effective. So, that is why it is, it should be and making it more action oriented uh, transformative pedagogy, because ultimately our goal is to how to bring transformation in the society, not only within the institution, but outside the institution that is in the community, in the society, in neighborhood. So, that is why how to bring transformation in our pedagogy by implementing introducing new concepts, new concepts like critical thinking, creative thinking, reflective thinking, experiential learning, collaborative learning and you know blend uh, having a blended approach towards uh, both uh, online and offline that is uh, te uh, techno technology blended deep learning as well as the uh, as well as the opportunity for the experiential learning, action research, uh, action research uh, all kinds of thing by blending uh, together we can uh, we can adopt a, we can prepare a action oriented transformative pedagogy along with the ESD, along with the ESD content syllabus etcetera. So, then that can only bring the changes, that can only the bring the impact, positive impact uh, not only in the minds of the stakeholders, but also in the environment, in the community, in the neighborhood. So, that is a action oriented transformative pedagogy. So, what are the, what is action oriented transformative pedagogy? So, that is ESD is about developing sustainability competences. Okay. So, empowering and motivating learners to become more active and uh, critical thinkers and critical uh, sustainability citizens. That means, who not only who are not just satisfied, who are not just passive, they are also active thinkers, active practitioners, active citizens. Like whatever um, they are seeing, they are observing, they are uh, looking around uh, in terms of practice things, uh, etcetera. They critically evaluate it, critically evaluate it. Uh, evaluate its pros and cons and try to put it in the sustainability platform either by changing it, suggest, uh, changing it or making them aware the stakeholders are adopting um, the self-sustainable behaviors and also uh, teaching or educating others regarding the sustainability competency. So, they become critical and sustainability citizens. So, being the global citizens, so they are now more aware of environment not just environmental sustainability, but economic sustainability, social sustainability everything. So, they become the sustainability citizens and also they are able to participate in shaping the sustainable future, because when all the stakeholders, all the stakeholders will be very conscious, very alert about the sustainability aspects uh, and very and think themselves uh, as the global citizen and having the responsibility of nurturing, caring for care, caring not only for the present generation, but for the future. So, they become more responsible, more active in uh, in implementing or in executing this action oriented transformative pedagogy, then only uh, then only the transformation can take place. So, the pedagogical approaches 
therefore, needed to achieve this end uh, and should be learner centered action oriented and transformative. So, here learner center more towards that means the educator, the teachers are there to facilitate to uh, as act as a mentor etcetera, but the action the uh, active participation of the learners of the students of the um, are, are very important. So, they have to be engaged in different kinds of uh, action research projects in collaborations in you know in uh, probably in the in uh, experiential learning projects. So, they have to undergo all kinds of the experiences all kinds of learning. So, be it um, that means to bring transformation. So, they have to be a part of the experiential learning realistic uh, problem solving situations project oriented. Uh, project or project oriented learning, then you know group assignments, team work, uh, then um, uh, NSS work like then an NSS work or you can say they are. So, they they will be engaged, they should be engaged in all kinds of academic and non academic and uh, social uh, social socio economical service oriented activities to make them not to not just make them more um, responsible involved and engaged. But they can only spread, they can only uh, enable or en empower others to uh, uh, to uh, educate uh, regarding the transform uh, transform uh, trans uh, sustainability and how to bring transformation in the positive transformation in the society. So they will be the major, you can the messengers, the um, change catalyst to bring that transformation in the society. So the key, uh, so here. Uh, the key pedagogical approach in ESD here in action oriented transformative pedagogy is that yes, definitely it has to be learner center. So, learn, learner center pedagogy uh, sees the students as the autonomous learner, independent learner. So, they have to emphasize on the active development of knowledge, not just knowledge, construction of knowledge, creation of knowledge, transfer of knowledge, uh, knowledge and um, learners prior knowledge as well as the experiences uh, to be transformed into the social context. So, stimulating the learning process in which the learners construct their own knowledge base, reconstruct, create the um, create new knowledge, uh, try to experiment on it, implement on it for the social benefit. So, they will be no, in, involved and engaged not only in the problem solving uh, activities, but also creation of knowledge and the um, scientific temper and uh, innovations also. So, that is the whole uh, the whole activity, the whole uh, teaching learning process and pedagogy should be learner centered starting from the learners needs choices objectives goals to the learners uh, behavioral outcomes performances and how he can uh, become a change agent in bringing the transformation in the society. So, the learner centered approach also uh, uh, also requires the learners to be reflective as we have already discussed reflective thinking reflective. Uh, then reflective um, you know reflective thinking reflective analysis on not only of their own knowledge of, but also the whole learning process getting the feedback uh, uh, getting the feedback and how to uh, you know how to develop the um, uh, uh, healthy learning habits of mind positive habits of mind so and uh, again uh, how to make it a part of your um, study habits then educating others then peer review peer feedback uh, tutoring peer tutoring uh, then uh, not only reflection on our own, on the own performance, but also um, on but also um, evaluating, monitoring, giving feedback to the peers uh, learning process there. So, learner centered approach actually to so it uh, it also uh, approaches also change the um, role of the educator also here the educators they act as an expert uh, who, who actually uh, um, transports the structured knowledge to that of the facilitator of the learning. So, they are not just the press so unlike the traditional approach the teachers educators are not the uh, you know prescriptive or active uh, you know active uh, uh, tutors like who prescribes everything and the learners are not the, uh, at the receiving end but uh, but rather so they they are the facilitator they will just give you the uh, guidelines the facilitate the monitor to mentor to to show you the path but the here learners they become the active participants of the whole uh, teaching learning process. So, so reflective thinking, reflective learning and then critical evaluation, critical thinking, creative thinking should be the on the should be practiced on the daily basis on the regular basis. So, that it becomes a part of the student study habits. So, uh, that automatically after some time uh, with the regular practice it becomes automatized. So, when uh, with when it becomes automatized means it uh, it get uh, embedded in our cognition our cognitive process. So, so with that uh, we also uh, enhance we also learners also will be able to develop the metacognition. Metacognition that is the 
understanding our own cognition so that they can uh, find out their strengths and weaknesses and accordingly um, change the strategy learning strategies uh, and uh, and uh, chat, uh, strategies and channelize uh, channelize their effort and motivation and energy towards the positive positive direction so how to empower learners all ultimately this uh, transformative pedagogy's uh, uh, objective goal is that empower cap not only just capacity building but also how to empower the learner to become the independent learner take the ownership of their learning be the responsible citizen so that they not only learn themselves but also they educate and help others in the community to uh, learning all these things so uh, this is all about the learner centered approach then action orientation so action orientation is primarily that how to engage the learners uh, in action and reflect on their experiences in relation to the intended learning process or the personal development so here experience might come from the projects like we are giving them the collaborative projects action oriented projects in service learning internships also nowadays internship during the uh, during the professional courses or academic courses uh, in the summer break and winter break the students they are on the voluntarily nowadays they are taking up this internship to expand their knowledge and experience so the, then again by organizing um, different kinds of workshops uh, facilitating through the different organizing uh, workshops training programs and then as uh, you know implementing some kind of campaign social campaigns health campaigns so that is action learning actually draws the colds learning cycle of you know experiential learning so experiential learning um, of cold theory of experiential learning primarily uh, based on the action learning and how we uh, draw the um, you know draw the assumption how do we try to how to try how we, we try to experiment on it examine it it so the cold cold learning cycle has you know has uh, shown the four stages first thing is that having a, having a concrete experience from the reality from the environment okay so then uh, having the experience then we observe start the observation and reflection so we start to observe the uh, ex exact situation the reality and try to reflect on this so observation and reflection are the again the learning process the for second process stages followed by the concrete experience and thereafter formation of abstract concepts uh, or for the generalization that then after that after observation and reflection then we used to formulate uh, different hypotheses different generalizations this different concepts maybe this this has this is happening due to this and that so we develop different concepts and the um, try to generalize it so abstract concepts for generalization but after that again uh, then after that we have to examine it so after generalization and abstract conceptualization then we try to apply it to the new situation to verify to examine whether actually it happens or not whether it actually works or not it is authentic or not it's helpful or not so this is the whole learning cycle having the concrete experience from the reality then observing and reflecting on this then assuming something forming the assumptions uh, and abstract concepts of generalization then try to experiment on it uh, on its uh, validity its reliability and authenticity through application to the new situation so this kolb's kolb's learning cycle experiential learning cycle is very very authentic and very much active and very much relevant in transformative pedagogy so here action learning increases the knowledge acquisition competency uh, development so when we can, we say the talk about the uh, children's you know play way method uh, play way method that is what the, when the children they play themselves they play with the different objects and uh, toys etc and uh, with their peers they learn so many new things so many things. So, so it is a kind of expert the more we are engaged in actually doing the things learning by doing it is a learning by doing so here the thing is that in higher education that means we are experiencing the whole situation the reality in practical that is happening outside the school also not only within the school outside the school so action learning increases the knowledge acquisition competency development values clarification by linking rather than the abstract concept not just the theoretical concept or the abstract concept to the personal experience but also it can be related to the uh, learner's own life and beyond life beyond his own life but that means to relate to the society the social life the community life so here the role of the educator is to create the learning environment that prompts learners experience and reflective reflexive thought process so here how to promote so that is why nowadays no it means the new pedagogy is like the flipped method flipped pedagogy okay In higher education the flipped pedagogy that means the students will go through the um, learning videos uh, beforehand uh, in the at home and but in the classroom the actual real uh, discussion brainstorming question answer question answer session then uh, doubt clearance 
activities all these things will happen in the within the classroom to expand the knowledge to uh, to uh, be to develop this kind of reflective thinking active learning all kinds of things so though it is not more kind of you know bookish learn bookish learning or the knowledge so action learning it increases so when we are learning by doing by experiencing the whole thing the trying to uh, 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 solve the problems, uh, formulate different strategies, uh, hypothesis testing, experimentation. So, not only it helps us in enabling expanding our knowledge, but also it enhances our competencies. So, this kind of so therefore, how to incorporate these uh, sustainability competencies through ESD, this is the way to engage the uh, to engage the learners in various uh, kind of different types of social projects, uh, uh, rural projects, uh, village projects, all kinds of action oriented projects. So, we have to that means, then either they will explore the problems uh, from the neighborhood and uh, work on it or maybe sometimes the teacher can also assign to them or make them the freedom to give them the freedom to go and observe and find out the what are the resources available, what are the problems they are facing and how they are how to solve resolve that problems. Then next comes transformative learning. So, transformative learning can be defined primarily by its aims and principle. Uh, it is not just concrete teaching or learning strategy, but it aims to empower the learners. So, empowering the learners through uh, you know through um, that means to question and change their ways of sees, uh, seeing and thinking about the world. So, empowering enabling uh, the learners uh, can be possible while uh, giving them the opportunity to engage in the different learning situations. So, empowering the learners means the learner can ask various questions, different questions and uh, he knows uh, all kinds of justification for uh, you know cause and effect relationship for en environmental outcomes uh, the you know the resources and how the resource mobilizations uh, whether are being utilized properly or no, done or not or what are the flaws what are the uh, setbacks and how to resolve it how to so all kinds of analysis they can do it by asking questions uh, and uh, questions and change their ways of seeing and thinking about the world it's not just from their individual perspective but from social perspective, from economic perspective, environmental perspective, cultural perspective, so 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 multi stakeholders perspective, so they can better understand the whole scenario, situations, and who are the actors and the players in that uh, context, that situation, and what are their roles, their perspective. So they can develop a kind of wide framework, uh, mindset framework, mental framework to uh, to you know to think from different perspective, different uh, angles, different uh, viewpoints. So, and, and they are up, they are after to enable them not only to understand the whole situation but to, to kind to you know to find out to find out the uh, possible solutions of uh, solutions for the problems and uh, um, solution for the problems and the uh, we can say which can uh, which can satisfy which can empower which can uh, enable the all the stakeholders all the stakeholders like in the community related uh, related activities and the problems and the issues in multiple stakeholders are there though house house as women category women are the stakeholders the rural men are uh, stakeholders youths are the stakeholders uh, you know um, other kinds of senior citizens are stakeholders health workers are stakeholders so from different perspective how to resolve these uh, problems and by taking into account, account the others uh, different perspective and not just uh, not just uh, individuals perspective uh, but also sustainability aspect perspective like the sustainability perspective like environmentally or eco friendly eco environmental or eco system uh, uh, implications, socio economic uh, implications, sustainability implications from all perspectives. So, Mejiro actually has started this transformative learning theory, Mejiro and his associates. So, this is the primary thing is to facilitate uh, is a the educator is just a facilitator who can empower who can empower um, who empowers and challenge, challenge the learners to change their world views. That means, capacity building not just by training and education, but empowering the empowering the learner to become the independent learner, independent thinker and active citizen by empowering them, guiding them, facilitating and challenging the learners, giving them the difficult things, challenging tasks. So, that he can um, not only uh, enhance enhance his own capacities, competencies and abilities, but also he can also change the world views, his, his perspective on the world, uh, the global world. So, 
and it goes beyond uh, one step beyond like a uh, step further in the sense that learning in ESD has to overcome the status quo and prepare the learner to dis for disruptive thinking and co-creation of the new knowledge. Here, so ESD when we talk about ESD learning is that the learner should be you know learner should be asked uh, should be given the challenges like he should not be uh, you know very complacent, he should not uh, be very satisfied complacent what is going on is okay, it is okay with me. So, he should not be satisfied with the status quo what is uh, status quo or the existing practices but to identify the flaws uh, the uh, critical evaluating it that is called the disruptive thinking to prepare the learner for the disruptive thinking and co-creation of the new knowledge unless and until he is you know uh, dist uh, he is disturbed and he is not satisfied um, uh, with the status quo practices or the existing practices and it creates a kind of uh, disturbance in his mind or this uh, you know uh, dissonance in his mind. So, disruptive thinking means he is not happy, he is not satisfied with the and with the dis this kind of disruptive thinking then thereafter that means critical thinking analysis then thereafter co-creation of the new knowledge and in order to solve these problems make it a futuristic uh, futuristic tool or uh, implications or uh, uh, applications etcetera how to co-create the new knowledge, co-creation of the new knowledge. So, that is the transformative learning's motto. Uh, objective is that not only critical evaluate or we um, critical evaluate that is so first of all the uh, first of all the students should not be very much uh, the learner should be challenged at every step whatever he is doing he is seeing he is seeing and looking around he is uh, uh, sensing he is perceiving everything every time he should be challenged in the sense that to expand his world view so that he he should that so that uh, he can put forward his ESDs. Uh, policies and principles uh, principles to overcome the status quo, status quo that is the existing practices, but to prepare the learner for disruptive thinking, for the divergent thinking, for more critical thinking and then to uh, come to the conclusion or the come, to come to the solution. So, which will be sustainable and co-create the new knowledge. So, in this way the construction reconstruction uh, of the new knowledge. So, here the learner sometimes they have to unlearn certain things, unsustainable practices, unsustainable habits they have to unlearn it and they have to they have to be not just complacent they have they cannot afford to be complacent with the happy with being happy with the status quo etcetera. They have to critically evaluate every, every situation scenario, activity, process uh, everything and uh, prepare and so being cri critical, critical thinker, disruptive. Uh, uh, disruptive uh, thinker, uh, divergent thinker and uh, reflective thinker, they have to engage in different kind of analysis and then come coming to the solution and at the time at the same time to co-creation of the new knowledge, co-creation of the new knowledge. So, I am just stopping it here right now, next class we will continue with this. Thank you very much.